Low danger noodles. Technical difficulties. Wait, why is everything in Russian? What? The game crashed. <laughs> English, please. Jesus Christ. I fixed it. Alright, hold on, I gotta fix the volume still. Dear God, is it loud. Um, apparently the game I wanted to play... Can't play. I'm very sorry. I wanted to play Dead Space, but apparently that can't work. Let me just redo my tweets delete that delete that delete paste tweet that I'm so mad. Because I really want to play the new Dead Space game. But apparently, even with my driver updated to its max, I still can't play it. Especially since I spent like literally two hours getting the fucking G Force to work. <laughs> I'll probably find some way to literally do up to record it somehow. But anyway, we'll play a game. Uh, Jerry told me to do, but before I hit start, oh, there's a bunch of save points. Jesus, it's still loud. So it's not that. Okay, there we go. Now it's not as fucking loud. Jesus Christ. But, um. Wait, why is it? God damn it. Fucking OBS bitch. Okay, now they should be able to hear you, Jerry. Because <laughs> apparently, oh, OBS right. decided to cut out your fucking voice. No, that's fine. Not many people. <laughs> Anyways, my two things I wanted to say. One, I couldn't do the horror, I couldn't do the finishing chapter one stream today because not everyone can make it, sadly. We'll uh, be postponed to a later date. Second, good news. My new stream alerts are almost done. They just need to be animated and then they're done and it'll be placed in. And you'll see my new stream alerts. That's the good news I wanted to share. Alright, let's start this. September 1998. Deep rural area near Lake Onega. An old black Vaz-2109. Just say the model. Did, did I really have to read the model of the car? <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> you can just say. Dash two one oh nine. You could just say old black Nissan or something. 
No, I don't want to give the crater shit because this already looks good. I, I just like making the jokes from time to time. Yeah. It's moving on a bumpy dirt road, carefully avoiding pits. A thick forest is hanging over the road as if it's trying to touch the car's roof with its trees. A stout middle aged man is behind the wheel. His black, ruffled hair, nervous face with wrinkles on, on the forehead and beer belly make it clear he realized he was not a family man type too late. His wife is sitting right next to him. He, she used to be a beautiful blonde girl. Now it's all gone. She reminds a fallen leaf worn out by the elements waiting for, for a winter snow to bury it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> this is one way to describe your characters. <laughs> The creator of the game didn't like either of their characters. I'm yeah. not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Maxine is occupied by their two children, a dark-haired 12 year 12 years old boy with empty cold eyes. <laughs> and a seven years old blonde girl with the only passenger who is looking out the window for for a mere curiosity. This looks like the boy, not the girl. <laughs> they're showing the boy, but they're talking about the girl, as history does. Yeah. Not because she wants to avoid an eye contact with the family. B of the fam- B of the family- This is probably Russian English. Oh. Yeah. B of the family took a cigarette from- It's probably he of the- the guy of the family, like the, the male the dude right here. The head of the family took a cigarette from his pocket and ignited it? Is Probably. It? Is it? Probably. His wife kept looking out the window and said quietly, Alec, I told you not to smoke in the cat. <laughs> I don't know why I gave her that voice. <laughs> why so? I did in the air. So what's feta? Roma might also start smoking at a very young age. I'll break his bones if he does. Jesus Christ! Oh! <laughs> no wonder he has a dead look in his eyes! Jesus! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Already leading to child abuse. Okay, I know the gay was dark, but right off the fucking bat! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Roma kept looking out the window. Being so young, he realized one thing. Silence is gold. Endure it. Don't argue. No! Child, no! <laughs> that sounds like the thoughts of an abuse victim. Yeah. Oh, God. No matter how... This is probably badly, not badly, badly you want to open your mouth, keep it shut. Yeah, there's definitely some uh... translation errors, <laughs> but luckily I can pick up on it. <laughs> Alec glanced at the rear view mirror and said to his son, You get it? While the boy kept looking out the window and thinking how to disappear, the father stopped the car, turned his face to him, and it acts with an aggressive tone. Hey, boy! I was talking to you, wasn't I? The boy produced a thin smile, looked at his father, and responded politely. Uh, yes, Dad, sorry. I I've been just thinking. The father hmmed with satisfaction, but the engine stalled at that moment. Well, no- no shit! I, I know from doing driving tests, you don't just slam on the brakes of a fucking car that can damage it, especially an on an icy road. That's fucking you stupid. An yeah. <laughs> they can literally rupture your engine. You don't do that. <laughs> that would serve him right, right? Yeah. <laughs> Alec rolled his eyes up and then turn and and turned the key. Back it up, back it up, says Jew. <laughs> the engine started hiccoughing as if it was about to sneeze and went silent. He tried again with no result. 
Oh, crap. I think the thing that you said it could happen happened. Yeah. Because he's an asshole. Yep. <laughs> I called it him instantly. Well, you backed up. <laughs> Rumb rumbled the father and started hitting his, hit the car's roof. His face was full of anger. The girl shrieked in fear and started crying. The mother screamed nervously. Stop it, Alec. You're scared of it again. You'll damage your mental mind, freak. <laughs> Who are you calling the freak? The child or the father? The father? <laughs> Man, I didn't know she could stand up to that asshole. Why didn't she do that for her son? What a bitch! <laughs> well, Peace. I don't know. It's fine if you abuse the son, but her daughter? That's too far. <laughs> Yeah. Piece of junk. Alec left the car and closed the car loudly. It sounds like a sentence I would write and need to be rechecked. Did no, you say no, mental you mind? Because you would say the door. Oh, I did say mental mind when it said mental health. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. You would say Alec left the car and closed the car door. Yeah. Which still sounds a little redundant, but better than what they said. Yeah. <laughs> this literally looks like something I would write and Natchi get mad at me. Like Not... I said, you, you wouldn't write it out as bad. Yeah. I, yeah, though, I, I think that it didn't really say that, because this is Russian to English. <laughs> they probably use Google Translate. <laughs> It's clear that they didn't use Google Translate. I've used it before, but uh, it's not much better. Yeah. Wait, does mental mind... E what does mental mind even mean? And yes, I will be that guy. Well, it's the mentality of the mind. Duh. Yeah, I'm still mad about the dead space. What? Uh, I said I'm still mad about the dead space. Yeah. I don't know. Is it bad that I hope you get to play a monster that kills the dad? <laughs> he threw a cigarette into the forest, picked another one, and started smoking it. Oh, you dick! Forest fires! Well, let's just hope he's not in California. You know what I was referencing, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you'd be offended by that. Oh. Right? I was born in San Francisco. I have Remember, from kids, age, only you can prevent forest fires. Ah, uh, fair. Yeah. Bookworm says, remember kids, only you can prevent forest fires. Yeah, Bookworm, I, I was going to do Dead Space, but OBS was not having it. <laughs> I, I know there's another way on my computer that I, I can record things. I can't stream, but I can record it. So I can do that. It's annoying as that is. Anyway, Roma kept looking out the window with the same heavy smile. He masters skill of maintaining his mask no matter what. Always saves him from trouble when dad is angry. Oh, you were there, Bookworm. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to delete that VOD later. <laughs> where I'm just having issues. <laughs> mm. Oh, sh okay, so that's how I can save. Okay, that's good enough. Right click is to go to the save area. Left click is to keep going. The mother left the car, opened the back door, and leaned over the daughter. Did dad scare you, Anya? Oh my gosh, it's Anya from Spy X Family. <laughs> this is her origin story. Sure. No, it's not. There's a bunch of Anyas. Yeah. 
Not your stream, but I saw a stream updates if you open any close in the game lol. Oh. Ah. Joker, <laughs> repeat nothing. Keep, repeat things, Joker. Do it. I believe in you. It's, a, it's all right. He won't hurt you. To toilet. You want to go to the toilet? Let's do it now so we won't have to stop again. When a woman and the girl return, the father finishes cigarette and three of them got in the car. Oh, Bookham already saw everything. Okay, let's give your grandma a funeral and start living a good life. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Is she dead or alive? <laughs> well, dead, but that's still basically going. Let's bury her, specifically not to mourn, but to celebrate. <laughs> but I can also see that taken as a murder threat too. I want to give you a funeral. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh. Alex, stop! She's not dead yet. Oh my God, she's not dead yet. <laughs> No, this game is translated from Russian to English, but I feel like this dialogue is going to give me a stroke. <laughs> it's a shoe. <laughs> well, to remember, this dialogue shows signs of being translated by a person rather than a translator, a Google translator. Yeah. So, that means you can double doubt whatever horrible translating they do. Right, I think it's this is implying she's on her deathbed and about to die. But still, I, I get it. We but it's don't know what she is. Well, we we'll just find might out. Want to kill her. Watch her be just perfectly fine. <laughs> Anyways, the girl looked at her mother with a question. Is our grand grandmother supposed to die? Jesus oh! Christ! Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Chew? <laughs> I mean, technically, yes, she is. It's Chew. <laughs> Chew would not be a great father. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, Bright is playing a new game, and the dad is a abuser. Yeah. And now he is threatening... The, he sounds like he is jokingly threatening to kill the grandmother before yeah. he even gets there. <laughs> also, he stopped the car in a way that threat, that would typically break a real life engine or risk breaking it, especially in the cold. They are in the freezing cold, and he did it specifically to threaten the son who was being politely quiet. Wow. Because he didn't answer him. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I just... The one looked at it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That was his own fault. Yeah. The one looked at her husband with a grudge and no, turned to the daughter. daughter. No, no, that's the dad. Dad, oh. the dad. Yeah. She's just very ill. She can die in time soon. She wants to see you even once in her life. Animation is almost half halfway done with my alerts. Thank you. Thank goodness. But she's alive. Don't worry. Oh yeah, Bookworm didn't hear that. Yeah, I got new alerts. She'll be very happy to see you in Roma. Oh, sure. Alec interrupted his wife with a smile. There must be someone whom this old witch will be happy to see. Fuck you, Alec. Okay, we gotta finish our business and then we'll start farming. 
and I'll buy Roma a bike. That that last word is one letter off from being a really bad word. <laughs> Just one letter. No, no, don't say it. Don't say I'm it. I'm not going to, but it is one word off. You know what? Let's move on. You want one, right? Yeah, I know. That's what I was talking about, book. That would be cool. The boy answered lazily, making a glad face. But his eyes were as cold as and indifferent as before. What's the point of hiding feelings if Dad can notice nothing? His father finds it convenient that he can always promise a bicycle and the son will forget everything. Even though he does it every year. What does he do? What does he do? He promises to get them a bike and doesn't get it. It's basically another abuse tactic. And his son finds it convenient to play along for this trick to work. <laughs> his name for what makes me concerned. So the <laughs> boy basically <laughs> plays along with the abuse because he just it's a survival tactic. Yeah. It's easier this After way. After all, if he doesn't play along and pretend like he doesn't notice, that'll probably get pissed. We saw yeah. it. Uh, just imagine how much worse he'd be considering how angry he got at not answering fast enough. Okay, bookworm. DM me, DM me what it is, just in case, because I, I feel like I I forgot what how it's spelled. What? Should I not tell Bookworm to do that? I know what it is, but I don't know how it's spelled, so I don't know if I actually say it. So that's why I'm telling Bookworm to send it to me. Also, just Google. Fuck off, shoot. Alec turned the key and the engine started with his first try. Oh, there really is that someone she wanted to see. Let's go. The car started moving, t moving trying to avoid deep pits. The sky was turning reddish, marking the beginning of the sunset. Wait, is the car sentient now? Maybe. <laughs> oh, that word. Okay, yeah. Now, now I'm out of spell. Thanks, bookworm. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yep, thank you, book. When it, when it's <laughs> shut up, you. <laughs> when it started to get dark and the forest corridor disappeared, and wine fields of already cut grass took its place. Right, as I said yesterday, you concern me. <laughs> shut up, you. <laughs> You could also see some haystacks lying around, and when the fields finally ended, a village appeared. A rather small settlement with a dozen of houses. The village sits on a hill surrounded by a palisade of forest. Its spruce stakes are piercing a dark sky. All was silent. The, the car stopped at the center of the village, but no one came to greet them. What building do we need, Sveta? I can't remember it, answered his wife, confused. It's been a long time. I was a child back then. It feels like it's my first time here. Shut up, Chew. It's not Silent Hill. <laughs> I recognize nothing. Alec, bar Alec barely noticed some human shades near one of the biggest and oldest houses and decided to move there. Maybe it's Silent Hill's Russian cover. <laughs> the closer they were getting, the clearer it became he was right. <laughs> it's waiting for the gameplay to start. I think this is the gameplay, Chew. Big old blackened house. A leading porch, a second roof, closed shutters. It made Alec worry a bit, but he recalled his wife telling him that her grandmother lived in some old believer's village and... 
Yeah, I think it is a visual novel. I don't know. It was a long. It was a couple days ago when I bought it. That must be some local custom. Oh yeah, I paid less than ten dollars for this. Don't worry. I think it was like five bucks, which was about closing the windows of a house where a person is about to die. Windows of I've other houses were open. Huh? You're also. I think I've heard about that before. I think you're also uh, supposed to cover the mirrors in the house, too. Ah. Oh, you found it. Yep, it's official novel. Thanks, Google. <laughs> He's sleeping. Fuck off, Chew. <laughs> you just don't appreciate the power of visual novels. Which, if this is a visual novel, then which character are you eventually gonna play? I have no fucking clue. I, I'm hoping it's not the father. <laughs> I'm also hoping it's not the horribly abusive, drunkard father. You know what? If I do play the father, I'll get him killed as much as possible. What are you, narcoleptic too? family stopped the engine and said in a rather depressed tone voice okay let's meet your grand grandmother shall we when the sleeping when the god damn it shoe when the family left the car and an old skinny lady with a dark skull shawl was walking towards them from a porch Another two ladies were sitting behind her on a bench, unmoving as birds of prey and waiting. The old woman got close to Sveta and looked at her with her wide open, cloudy eyes. Also, this is Russian with Baba, Baba Yaga making an appearance? I doubt it. Well, technically, she's just wearing a babushka, which is very popular for older people. In Russia. Yeah. Older women specifically. Hmm. Everyone got close to Zvet and looked at her with her wide open cloudy eyes. Actually, for, for what she looks like, she doesn't look that bad. Zvet doesn't look that bad. The hell, game? <laughs> Lady's lips shaked and formed something looking like a smile, and then she said with her voice trembling, Is it you, Sveta? You grew up so much. Right, you're judging the book by its cover? <laughs> Shut up. Yes, it's me. Instant the mother, sounding rather confused. <laughs> Make me nerd. <laughs> Fear not, even though you don't remember me. We met here when you were very little. I realize my grandmother voice is not going through Discord much, as much as I hate it. Well, I'm gonna see if I can put my mouth closer to Mike. You might be able to hear it. You were a little child, and I was always babysitting you. We used to walk to the lake. I taught you swimming. Yeah, it's definitely going through now. <laughs> and we were playing in the fields, remember? I feel like your old lady voice is gonna wreck your vocal cords. I actually can actually just this is not hurting my vocal cords at all. Yeah. Yes, probably. Old lady's face was as dry as a dead dead trees crust but her eyes were wet and seemed big the eyes were almost colorless as if they were painted with gu guache and you could barely recognize any blue in them 
the old lady reached her thin arm, looking at like a withered tree branch with her long fingers on it, and said quietly, It seems you don't remember, but that's fine. I'm Maria. You've grown up to be so pretty. Oh, she looks very nice for a grandma. Yeah. It's pronounced gauche. Oh. Thanks, Chew. <laughs> Such cute children and a handsome husband. Oh, no. Uh, I don't think she knows. She does not know. Well, let's just agree that the kids are cute and the kids are cute. <laughs> and you have a pretty daughter. <laughs> and cute grandkids. Oh, no. Hello. Alec answered in a rather lost way and stretched out his arm for a handshake. He called me Alec. Oh, that's great. Hello. Answered Maria in the same blissful manner, turning her unblinking gaze towards Anya and Roma. The children still still for a dozen of seconds until the father told them to introduce themselves. <laughs> I am only getting questions and no answers. <laughs> well, deal with it, Chew. <laughs> they told the old lady their names, and after listening to her kind words, slightly grew a distance with her to avoid it any eye contact. That's... Yeah. Another old lady was slowly coming down from the porch at the same time. At the same time. Looking at Maria, she, she said, God damn it. <laughs> Fucking Discord. Fuck off. Oh. Looking at Maria, she said kindly. Oh, they came after all. That's good. I'll take a nap. I'll be on my watch tomorrow. Sure, have a nap. He'll be fine. Is that grandma there? How's she? Asked Sveta about her grandparents' health, but Maria looked at Sveta silent for a moment and invited a whole family to drink tea with her. Come in. You're welcome. We'll drink some tea, talk, and you'll visit your grandma. We are short on time. And I gotta prepare you. For what? Asks Alec in a loud voice. Why is he a dick in every situation so far? I don't know. I must warn you that while I, I respect your faith and customs, I don't believe in God and would like you not to do anything unnecessary. Oh, he's an atheist. Oh, well, just because he's an atheist doesn't mean he has to be a dick. Yeah. I know people like him exist, but it doesn't make them better. Yeah. Damn angsty atheists. <laughs> Not the discourse. <laughs> I will have to comment that I am an atheist, and as an atheist, I think he's a dick. It just court found its way here. There's no escaping it's this book. <laughs> Yeah. And I think it's not right to force your kids to not be involved in customs if they want to be. It's their fucking great grandma. Let them mourn. Let them deal with it. Just get get your butt out of the way. Yeah. And also don't involve my children in it. <sighs> Maria's glass eyes, like two big radars, started slowly turning towards the head of the family. She was looking at him as if he was a petulant child, 
who had some stupid and funny stuff. I just laughed. Yeah. <laughs> oh my dear. You worry for nothing. I'll just prepare you for it and your rest is up to you. You'll decide for yourself. Who knows, maybe it's better for you that you don't believe in those things. About ten minutes before the atheist character says something racist or ableist. Uh, and that did not sound like clapping, says Chew. Chew, that was clapping with my hands. What did you think I was clapping with? My butt? No, he, he was thinking you were jacking it. Uh, <laughs> Chew, you fucking little pervert. Your words, not mine, says Chew. You. We already know what you're thinking. Okay, fair enough, bookworm. My ass cheeks cannot clap. <laughs> There's too much muscle. I mean, maybe my ass cheeks can clap. I, I got big ass. I don't want to know! <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way to find out. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> it's just water in the sense. Dude, no. <laughs> anyway. I'm sure everyone has some amount of muscles in their butt. Right. Chariots, <sighs> Gordon. Normal amount of muscle. <laughs> I'm sure most people, or at least they have, I, I'm sure some people, or I, I'm probably not the only one that has much butt muscle here as, I can't be the person here with the most butt muscles. Yes. Oh no, you definitely are. Yeah. Alright, then let's do a test. How many people have so many mus- I mean, how many people have enough muscle strength in their butt to literally, like, go up and down using only your butt? I want to neither confirm that. I, <laughs> I don't want to confirm that I can. <laughs> up and down, what's this book? Off the floor, off the floor, book. What did this song do? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Book was on the floor. Yeah. 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 What is this thing thinking for? George is trying to see how many times. Let's just continue back to the game. Oh. Maybe, maybe you'll just be fine coming out of daddy. The family followed the old lady to a small house on the edge. Sveta noticed some motion behind the curtains while passing by the neighbor's windows. The dead village only looked dead. Won't be. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> the dead village is dead. <laughs> yeah, no fucking shit. <laughs> Now the mother of two children could feel the gaze from every house with her, with her own skin. She was surrounded by unpainted houses with no fences. No signs of sheep or cattle were present. It was getting really dark. When it got close to the house, Maria unlocked the door and started climbing the lane porch, telling the guests to come along. The porch was leaning so much the guests had to use the wall in order not to fall from the stairs, almost lying on, on their side. 
I guess we're invited to sit at the table as soon as they entered the house. Oh my gosh, the guy guy's face already looks like a face of a piece of shit. Well, he may look like the worst personality person here, but um I have no I have nothing. Wait, the woman's face looks like she's about to stab a bitch. <laughs> she's like looking at, at him, ready to stab. <laughs> I, I don't think she looks ready to stab. If you look at her, if you look past her eyes, you'll notice, uh, if you take everything in and not just the way her eyes are like zoned out, you'll notice she's in a very upset state. Yeah. I, I love Chu's message. I love how Bright is reading a badly translated visual novel while Jiri and Book are debated, uh, debating asses. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. so the dad looks indifferent while she looks quite traumatized. She also looks and... quite young. She looks young, but not that young. But very beautiful. The husband is about to be young to be beautiful. <laughs> Look for him. The husband is about to go, uh, about to undergo a horrible accident. <laughs> I, I wish that grandma just threw the hot tea on him and had an accident with him. <laughs> you know what? They're in a dead village. How many people are gonna tell on getting rid of the abuser? Yeah. Anyway, while the host was working around the kitchen, Alec was examining a Meshra interior. Wallpaper and a process of peeling off a tablecloth with a hole in an old Soviet sugar bowl and jars. On the ceiling, there was what seemed to be the only source of light in, in this house a lonely light bulb. Relatively new chair was offered to the head of the family. A few wobbling stools and a bench at the wall. Let's have some soup. You don't have time to cook unless you want to eat at midnight. And after the, the dinner, you can do your things. My stew might not be as fancy as what they have in the city, but it's all I got. Is she... Is she doing so... Is she doing so badly? Asked Feta with fear in her eyes. Well, I see all oh. right, she's upset. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. But first and foremost, listen to what I have to say. Don't open the windows. Keep the shutters shut, even when the sun is high. Why would oh! we shut the windows? <laughs> he looks like, I, I kid you not, he looks like a combination of Ronald Reagan and Al Capone. And I can't unsee it. Are you saying he's like the worst of both of them? Because I don't see him as a good person. Yeah. I feel like Ronald Reagan and Al Capone both have their good sides, and this man has none. Yeah. Uh, I think this is on the mom's side. Yeah, it's the mom's grandmother. Yeah. Wait, but she says, looks like someone who, who'd kill his whole family and then freeze outside in the movie for the Shining. I know what that reference is. I don't know why, but I can see features from... Ronald Reagan and Al Capone put together in this. I don't know why I see it. And I can't get it out of my head. It's their secret love child. <laughs> Do you want us to live in the dark? Argued Alec. Say so he took the form of a shriveled tomato. His voice sounded irritated. His wife immediately tried to calm him down. 
Stop it, Alec. Calm down. Maria wasn't scared by this. It seemed like she was expecting such response. She's expecting him to be a dick? Yep. <laughs> she continued confidently. Don't be nervous like that. But you need to know one thing about your grandma. It's not a pleasant thing. People don't talk about it loud. But we are no strangers to each other. Everyone is connected by family ties in our village. What do we need to know? Everyone knows about it. Even you knew. But you were little back then. Your grandma has demons. Excuse me. What does she have? Oh, Alex. is he gonna be the dick? Yes. Alex's face once again turned into an unpleasant grimace, both surprised and, and demissive. Can I go on a little... Or, or rant about demons uh, for a bit? Sure. There's, there's one thing that bothers me by some Baptist religions. They believe that despair is a sin. What? Like, yeah, you being in misery is a sin. You know what? That's technically better than what Mother Teresa believed, mm -hmm. which was the despair and suffering of the poor made God happy. Yeah, they said that that was the first sin Adam and Eve did. And I'm pretty sure that's not right. <laughs> that wasn't the first. I believe the first one was disobedience. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even believe despair is a sin. I don't think that would keep you from going to heaven. That's just the thing we'll go through. No despair bright, only happiness. <laughs> Anyways. Alex's face once again opened into an unpleasant grimace, both surprised and dismissive. She will do despair if he wants. <laughs> it's not like this made him angry. He is just used to talk to people like this. It feels like everyone around him wants to fool him. They either want to fool him or themselves are, are complete fools. There is just no other way around. But his son always stands in place and says nothing. He just he starts looking around at something distant. Chu, no. Wait, what's Chu doing? I mean, Chu would be really happy if he met Jesus. Chu wants a little bit of that holy spear. Oh my goodness! Chu, no. no. That's blasphemous. Yes, that's blasphemous. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes become slightly empty. He tries to hear nothing, see nothing, and think of nothing. He is atheist, lol. Do you think I care about blasphemy? Fair. <laughs> oh. And do you care about <laughs> blasphemy? <laughs> no I mean that is blasphemous but I honestly wouldn't care I would just probably say Ch I don't know who Chu is <laughs> in that point it's like do you know who this person is but no <laughs> like who's Chu I don't know him yeah <laughs> you do you <laughs> and I do me we won't do each other. Probably. <laughs> God damn it, Punk Farm and Chew. Punk yourselves. But in his head, as if in a church bell, every note of a father's voice causes pain. How do you know if God's a woman, a man, Chu? God could be a woman. Don't, don't misgender God. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Women have dicks. You know what? Chu is right. Women can have dicks. <laughs> Why? Why'd I agree? Why'd I agree? Anyways. The stream. The stream. <laughs> you sweetie dwellers probably don't believe in those things. Maria continued her talk calmly. But no one can escape them. Well, you don't have to believe in it. But listen to me, Attic. I can see you love your family and will do everything to protect them. A real man. Uh, no, 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 no. Not speaking to you, Chu. If what I, I can feel your faith in that the abusive father. Yeah. <laughs> if what I have to tell you would be no use to you, that's perfect. This village isn't short and stupid, you know. But listen to me anyway. At least you'll know what to do when the time comes. Sound like I've ever seen anything on you. Fine, I got it. But what demons have you been talking about? And what does she has demons even mean? Continued the man. I mean, she has them. They give her power. Your grandma's a witch doing unholy things. God damn, I keep clicking wrong. God forgive, she has many demons. Oh, is this persecuting witches? Fuck, I forgot what the pagan faith is called. That Which one? It, it starts with a W. That's what I'm thinking of. Wicca is not that old. No, that's not what I was trying to say. It was old. It's like that deals with witchcraft and stuff like that. There's more than one belief that deals with witchcraft. Ah. I'm Wic sure whatever the grandma believes in, it's older than right. that. Yeah, the only one I know of is Wicca. Well, I'll... Wicca is popular in modern. Yeah. I'll probably watch a video later because I've always wanted to look at other branches of pa paganism. Bookworm is right. Folk magic is regional. It's also much older. Yeah. It's also a lot harder to trace because people don't really talk out about it outside the region. That's why it's regional. Yeah. It's not that I want to change my face, it's just like to understand what and what not to say <laughs> in case it comes up in like a game or something. Or pick up on things, stuff like that. The uh, grandma might have uh, been uh, believing in folk magic. Uh. Maria made a sign of a cross hastily and continued. But that's not the issue. Your grandma will, will be having a hard time dying until she drafts them off. Yeah, I already knew that, shoe. I already knew what Christianity did. Maybe, but I'm not into that kind of stuff. Bookworm. To be fair. Yeah, that that's why you, you mustn't touch it with your hip with hands or even a single finger. And take nothing from our hands. Wait, can you touch her with your dick? I'm sorry. Right? I'm Don't sorry. A dying old woman with that. <laughs> what if it's her last wish? <laughs> no! <laughs> Keep the children from being close to her. Let her speak if she wants. Bring her food and water, but nothing else.
Okay, I'm starting to think that Dad has a point with her persecuting ass. Or else she can drop them without you noticing, or even worse, she might give them to one of your children. Anya was scared and started crying, looking in, in her mother's eyes with hope. Alec took a deep breath, and then he breathed out and said calmly, Okay, Roma, finish your tea and go outside with your sitter. The sister. The sitter. <laughs> Sister. Younger, I'm pretty sure she's not watching her brother. Yeah. Stop making me agree, says the shoe. These are adult talks. Shut up, Brett Chew. We will follow you soon. Have a walk until we're, we are done. Roma stood up silent, took his sister's hand, and walked outside with her. When the children left the house, Alec calmly looked at Mariah and asked her to continue. I'm actually wondering, how long is this game? So we might be able to beat this one stream. I can't find it, so I guess we can't, because it keeps talk, pulling up Christianity shit. <laughs> well, folk magic has kind of merged with Christianity in most of the places that it existed in. No, I was... Kind of like in this weird issue no. where it pre pre precedent is way older than Christianity, but it's found its way to exist with Christianity. Because that's the only way it could exist without being destroyed, but it's, yeah. it's destroyed a lot of its history. But it's still folk magic, and it's definitely still not Christian. Yeah, the one I was looking up was how long the game was. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I said it was it just is showing up Christianity shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thanks, Google. <laughs> You're fine, Jerry. Sorry. You're fine. Keep good information for stream. But anyway. Continued the old lady with, with the same monotone. She'll be having a very hard time dying. Your job is to stay with her until she gets in, the, in a grave. She'll scream. She'll curse you. It'll be scary. But fear not. Bear it. When it all happens, you'll have a house with a farm. You can also sell it if you wish. You'll get money either way and everyone will be happy. You only need to see you off. And we'll help you. Masha and Lucia are on the watch too. Just in case, so you won't be afraid. I'll also be on watch helping you every day. I hope you aren't afraid, Alec. I'm not. I got it. You shouldn't touch her or accept anything from her hands. You must see her to the final journey. By the way, why do you keep the window shut? That will do big harm. Her power is trapped like a venomous snake. We shut mirrors and windows to keep them this way until it's all over. Oh, the mirrors as well. Alec took a deep breath once again. Hey, cheers! I was right on that guess too. <laughs> okay, I get it. But we must go now. Excuse us, please. Thank you for the dinner. You're welcome to visit our house too. I guess exchange pleasantries. And the host, after convincing Maria, not to follow them, left the house. When Roma and Anya got outside, it was really dark. I 
one could barely see the moonlight coming through the thick clouds. Not a single street light. The houses also didn't produce any light. The sister walked to her brother and asked with a trembling voice. Is it, is it true? What? About demons? Is our grand grandma a real evil witch? Just like in fairy tales? Of course, no. Don't worry. Evil Wishressa, as well as kind ones, live only in fairy tales. And why did Maria say this? She lying to us? No, she just. What? In the countryside, many everyone believes in God, magic, demons, and other stuff. Maria didn't mean to misguide us. She herself thinks it's true and wants to warn us. Is it true demons don't exist? Yes, it is. I'm scared, Roma. Let's enter the house. We can't. We must wait here. Why? Aren't you scared? A little bit. And it's cold here. Gusty wind below run through the village. Hmm. Playing with the girl's fair hair. That's not where I thought I was going, and I'm glad it went that way instead. Wait, what? Where do you think he was going with his sister? <laughs> I'm not repeating it. I know that's it was bad for me to think that instantly. I, I'm not answering it. I'm following Chu's advice. Don't answer. Shaking my head. She pulled over to her brother even stronger and said to him with a crying voice. That's return, brother. No. Why? What do you mean by... That That was supposed to be why, I'm pretty sure, not what. <laughs> what do you mean by why? Have you heard what father, the father said? We can't. Anya looked at her brother with big surprised eyes full of tears and acts with an even quiet voice. Dad will be angry again? It's not that. They're just about to leave the house, too. Romo was extremely disgusted by the fact he had to always lie. Anywhere and at any time. He had to lie to the father to avoid his anger. And to his mother so she wouldn't tell the father. And even to his sister. She wouldn't ask the father why he's angry and scolding them. Because after investigation, the father would find him to blame for teaching the sister to talk and think like that. It is better to be silent and wait for a right moment. The fate will bring justice eventually. He looked at his sister. Stupid girl understands nothing. At her age, she is already capable of speaking and talking without drawing attention. She cannot... The same cannot be said for her. Should Roma even once make a mistake? <laughs> By calling his father a freak, she'll be sure as the father why Roma called him like that. He was in a silent anger, disliking her sister a bit. Not for her stupidity, but for the fact he cannot rely on her. And he wanted to rely. He continued looking in her beautiful blue eyes, shining full of life, a complete opposite of, of those of Maria. This game feels mean spirited and for literally no reason, says Chu. I agree. Yeah. Roma hugged his sister and turned his back to the wind to protect her from the piercing cold air of the fall. Anya, let's do some jumping, okay? Why? Mom taught me to jump when it's cold. This warms you up. Okay. 
They started jumping up awkwardly, stepping on each other's feet, but in a, f in a <laughs> look after A. <laughs> that was obviously a typo they made. But all that purpose. <laughs> what a typo! What a typo! <laughs> That made me stop reading the second I saw that. <laughs> oh, you know what? Instead of saying that word, say the word that we all know it's supposed to be and not that word. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh that, that literally broke me when I saw that. And Bookworm says, F and J aren't even too close to each, to each other. Oh, anyway. They started jumping up awkwardly, stepping on each other's feet. But in a few seconds, they were jumping in toward turns holding their hands higher and higher like swings. He, I was choking about the racist and bigotry earlier. I hate you being right. <laughs> Says so you, hey Bookworm, can you click the moment we figured out about the the few seconds thing? Thank you. <laughs> you don't have to, but it, it would be awesome if you could. Uh. Cause that's just amazing. <laughs> he could feel her every move with his body. I don't like the wording with that sentence. I don't like that sentence. <laughs> Please make the stop so true. <laughs> jump landing, jump landing. Anya started giggling, which she was really into this game, and in a few seconds, she was laughing out loud. Roma was too about to laugh, seeing how his sister was having fun. But then in a moment, she was standing with her mouth wide open, staring behind his back. She acts frightened. Who, who is this? A short shade was approaching them from the darkness. The hands of the shade was hanging down like ropes. The way it was walking seemed clumsy and unnatural. The shade stopped ten meters away from the children and leaned on its side like an old pillar. It speaks in a few seconds. Hi. Are you Nyusha's grandson? Romo was standing there still for five seconds or so trying to figure out if it was addressed to him. The shade came closer, and the darkness exposed the face of an awkwardly looking boy who was a foot taller than Roma. He was dressed in rugs, and the boots he was wearing were clearly made for someone bigger. The stranger approached even closer and reached out his hand. Hi, I'm Via. I'm going to ask why did they mistake? The shadowed figure of a living person for a shadowed figure of a dead person. Because that's what a shade is. Well, I don't know. That <laughs> stranger dangerous is true. I I'm I'm Roma. Stranger shook his head and looked with curiosity at Anya, who was hiding behind his brother's back. She's your sister, right? Yeah, her, her name is Anya. Thea wiped his nose with a sweatshirt sleeve and smiled, showing his crooked teeth. Then he spitted and kept asking questions. You came to see your grandma, right? You may be giving him a creepy voice, but he just looks a like a fucking. I don't know. I think in fact, kind of deserves by the questions he's asking, because they seem creepy. 
Well, honestly, it's less that and it's like the questions of a kid from around the area. Yeah. You're probably the only other kid he's seen in like what? How many years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, your grandma is Nisha, right? She's our great grandma, actually. Yeah, she's really old. Is it true you'll be staying at her house? Yeah, aren't you afraid? Romo was a little bit confused by the question, but he disliked both Fia and his conversation. Thus, he produced a cold and confident answer. I'm not. And your parents will be staying with us, too. Yeah, your dad most likely fears nothing. By the way, is it true that he's a mobster in the city? What? It sounds... The sound of steps from the... The house and the door opening made this uncomfortable question swing in the air. Alec approached the children, took a cigarette, and started smoking, and looked at Via, who was staring at him silent. You must greet adults when you see them, Alec said in a dismissive manner. Via sniffled and said words one could barely hear. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Let's go, Roma. We gotta unpack stuff and have you go to bed. It's very late. Roma felt sorry for his new friend for some reason. Apparently yeah. his dad is so horrible he feels bad for the possible shade. Yeah. He disliked him, but his father disliked Fia even more. And now it's enough for a sound boy's feelings to turn upside down. He took his sister's hand, looked at the village boy, and said goodbye. They saw an old lady on a porch who was looking at them humbly without saying a word. Alec greeted her and added, and added after a moment of silence. I think it's better for you to go home, ma'am. You shouldn't spend a night in the cold air in your age. Go home, please. Don't worry. We'll be fine. Have some rest. The old lady approached the man silently, staring at him calmly and maliciously. <sighs> she pulled out a small icon, and she made a sign of a cross with that icon. She came down the porch and went away without dropping a word. Alec threw away the roach, which was shining in the darkness like a meteor. He exhaled the smoke and said quietly, Crazy people. How much does he smoke to get it down to the size of the roach? For mm. heaven's sake! Chew's brain is imploding. <laughs> When the squeaky door was finally opened, the family could hear low moans, which reminded more of a cow mooing rather than of a sound produced by a human being. The moans were coming from the far side of the house. The hallway was in a complete darkness. They stood there motionless. I liked looking at his family and said with, a, with confidence, don't be afraid. I'll go pick the flashlight. Can't see shit. Sveta was there at the doorstep with the children. Pressuring moans were still coming from the darkness. She was she was to hide her, her fear in order not to scare the children, but failed at it. Mommy, I'm scared. And yeah, that's true. They probably did mean to say brooch instead of roach. Now there's so many th things. Yeah, they, they said roach, and I read it as roach. 
So that means that they just took a bug and threw it. <laughs> Actually, roach is basically a. It can either mean a type of smoking. I will not say here, or uh, something that's basically really smoked down, which would suggest he smoked the cigarette to basically nothing before tossing it. No, it was an item that was given to him. Oh. Yeah, I think that meant to say brooch. Well, it's nice to know he's not a pot smoker. I mean, god damn it. I, I was trying to avoid saying! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Anya faintly. She was gasp grasping her brother's arm with all her might. Don't shame people who like 420, says Chu. I'm not shaming them. I would have just been very upset if a person like that was also a pot smoker. Father's footsteps made a sound behind their back. He got around the family, turned on the flashlight, and illuminated the gloomy hallway with a snagging cellar on top. The hallway was full of rags and brooms here and there, and one could see buckets and bowels. It's fine. Let's go. Said Alec, feeling that fear was finding its way into his soul, too. Reaching the big door was wide open for some reason. Alec whispered thoughtfully. Looks, looks like it's here. The smell of damp and mold filled their noses. With help of the flashlights, Feta found the switch. The house filled with a dim light. The wide rooms had high ceilings. Curtains on the windows were pulled together. A huge dining table, an old Russian stove with a daub completely fallen off. Someone's blackened photos in a frame and chairs in a, a drawer and a closet in the back room. Reaching a big door, which was wide enough for some reason, Alec whispered thoughtfully. What a disgusting smell. Is she at the source, perhaps? What a horrible person. Alec said with this with some weird giggling in his voice. His wife took his arm and stopped him. Alec, cut it out. Don't say this stuff. At least not in front of the children. Well, looks. Looks here is where we'll sleep. You and Anya will be using this bed and read that one. Said Alec and pointed at the further bed in another room. That bed was the smallest. All of a sudden, the moaning became a sharp cry, freezing the entire family motionless. In a few seconds, a voice reached out. From another direction behind the wall. The voice is hoarse and low, but strong and confident. I'm here, Sveta. I don't feel good. Make haste. I'm in a cell. Haggard Sveta winced and looked at the floor at the door to the hallway. Wasting a few seconds, she started moving towards it cowardly. A sign of sympathy and pity appeared on Alec's face. He followed his wife and said to his children, children, Wait a bit. We'll be back soon. After entering the hallway, they went to the door opposite, a probable source of the voice. She opened and felt a cold with all of her body. She has seen the most aesthetic view she has ever seen. A huge chest in the right corner and a bed in the left, one where her gravely ill grandmother is, is lying. Bent blackened planks on the floor with huge gaps between. Uh. Bent blackened planks on the floor with huge gaps between them. Fucking Discord. 
The walls were as gloomy as the floor. One of the walls had a small window cut with an axe. No frame, no glass. You would rather call it a hole in a wall. This hole was the only source of light in the room and the reason behind its low temperature. Oh, you made it, said the old woman on the bed. Her abdomen was huge, as if she was pregnant. Her hands on the other hand were thinned and curved, making one think of a tree in the fall. The face was scrawny and ugly. Her stretched over the skull skin was covered with pots. Right, the, the lobes in your chat are increasing. I see that. The mouth was wide open. The eyes looked huge. But those eyes were bright, full of life and energy. Alec peeked out from behind Sveta and asked in a worried and polite manner. Hello, ma'am. I'm Alec, your granddaughter's husband old woman was motionless like a corpse but her eyes quickly looked at Alec and she looked at Sveta her jaw was making a faint motion producing loud and clear words it seemed like those words were coming from her stomach Sveta I feel really bad have him bring me water At first, one could see on Alec's face this insulted and confused him. But in a few seconds, as if he remembered where he was, Alec breathed out, and being genuinely humble and respected towards a dying person, said, Yeah, sure, one moment. Alec left the room, and his wife stayed alone with, with the old woman, feeling uneasy because of her unpleasant gaze. Sveta wanted to break this awkward silence and demonstrate her empathy as a relative, and she asked her grandmother, Grandma, why do you refuse to go to the hospital? I think they could help you feel better there. Sveta, they won't let me die. Help me. Take them away from me. What? Take them, Sveta. They'll serve you well. But don't let him have them. Get it? Take them yourself. Whom should I take? And what are you talking about? Come closer. I'll show you. They are waiting near. Waiting for your word. Sveten. Satan never believed in all this mystic stuff, but got scared. Yes, Grandma must be raving. And that was understandable. The one was about to die, thus feeling very sick. But Sveta got scared nonetheless. Don't agree to take the crazy woman's demons. For a moment, she really thought thought someone else was in the room. Someone she couldn't see and heavy as an air before thunder. She surrendered to panic and run out into the dark hallway where she could feel someone was watching her. Something was there in the darkness. For a moment, the reason won. There's nothing there. It's just fear, nothing more. Now every small will seemed dangerous, but the fear was still there and no reasoning could calm you down now. Reaching out her shaky hands, she tried to reach the door leading to the rest of the house, but touched something warm and living. Sveta screamed 
shrunking like a, a hedgehog. Door opened and a light let her see who was in front of her. She looked up at her with sca her scared eyes and saw her husband with a ta ladle of water. What's up? Got scared by me in the darkness? Alex hugged, hugged his wife, giggling, and whispered, Don't be afraid, stupid. Let's keep the door open so we won't break a bone or two in this darkness. Go to the bedroom. I'll give her water. When he entered the cell, he could see the old woman's eyes moving. They reminded him of maggots crawling in a corpse. Oh. Alex stepped ahead and said awkwardly, No? What? I didn't turn the scare bright off. See? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just which mobile being dumb. I brought you water. The woman's skinny hand rose up in the air and with a wicked movements was trying to catch something. Her eyes rolled once again and stopped at Alec. Mouth moved and produced sounds from deep inside her body. Why are you here? I don't think this is supposed to be Alec. I think this is supposed to be her. Uh. Says, why are you here? You want this house. I think that's supposed to be her. Well, let's see the next line to see what, what the response is. Let's see what's going on. Alec's grimace changed. His humbleness, oh, yeah, it was supposed to be her. Yep. Yeah, his humbleness and politeness disappeared. His eyes were burning. Seemed like steam could come out of his mouth. He talked spitting as if he was made to try and eat something disgusting. Are you so nasty that even before death you talk like this, or is it? He was interrupted. The woman said in a metallic voice. I know everything about you. You want to hide from the bad guys in the city. You sneaky bastard. Alec was stunned. He recovered from the shock and pulled himself together. He sipped from the ladle and decided to clarify an important detail. What are you talking about, Grandma? You live like a dog and will die like one. Growled the old woman with an unnatural low voice, choking on her own saliva. You know what? I didn't know I'd like someone less than the dad, but we are. Yep. Anger made a few wrinkles on Alex's face, and he splashed the rest of the water on the old woman. He ignited it like like a match and stood up clenching his fist barely refrained from beating up the old bitch. Jesus! Well, think of this. She's literally talking like the worst person ever on her dying on her deathbed. Fair. I don't blame him. Also, why is she such a horrible woman? Don't know. Then Alec joined his wife at the kitchen. The children were discussing something in a big room examining old magazines on the floor. Alec felt tired and even a bit guilty. His sparks of anger were quick to start 
but they were so they were to end. The only things left was regret. Roma was secretly watching his agitated parents discussing something. He liked it. While well, the parents were clearly worried, what's good about that? But Roma was almost happy. When trouble comes to their family, they unite. No screaming at each other. No insults. No plate smashing. No threats. If only this can happen more often. When the cold beds were prepared for the night and everyone was about to sleep, someone knocked on the window. Alec got up trying to figure out if he was sleeping or awake. They knocked once more. As Feta was sniffling in tranquility, the knocking failed to wake up the children too. Alec put his pants on, turned on the flashlight, which left near the bed, came to the window and pulled away the cur curtain. Now he is staring at the glass beyond which lies darkness. It took a few seconds for him to realize he was staring at, at the closed shutters. He cursed quietly and went to the porch. The hallway was cold. The old woman made no voice. After opening the door to the porch, he sticked his hand out and saw a tall man in the stairs. The city monster felt the cold in the night with his skin when he approached this man. Is it because this man was larger than him? And Alec, the, and Alec, like a prehistoric hunter, saw another man as a rival, first and foremost, and thought about his chances to win a fight should it come to that. He put his flashlight in the pocket in order not to point it to his guest, as if his guest was a wild beast not to be provoked. Stranger came to Alec at arm's length and said in a low voice, Hey, pal. Wanna drink vodka with us? That because... is actually seen as a welcoming gesture. Yeah. He's trying to welcome them. So. You couldn't see the stranger's face in the darkness, but Alec are Ari was disliking this guy. The first thing he said was a nice thing, you fucking shit! If not for a dude's size, he, he would already throw him out. But in this case, he didn't want to make decisions too quickly. Vodka, you say? I do you understand why my wife and children are sleeping there? Oh, come on. Who will bother them here? Let's go with us. We'll have a good time. Alec felt silent once again, thinking about his chances to win. He looked back, searching for a plank or a stick, and asked the stranger for a cigarette, too, to keep his attention away from the search. The stranger kept staring at half-naked Alec. Alec thought for a moment that the man was a bulging had a bulgy nose as big as a pig's snout. God damn it. I, I hope this is not going where I think it's going. I hope not. I hope not. Did they hit him in the face or was he born ugly? He kept Why his, are you so stupid, Alex? Sorry. He kept his thought in his head and asked him again with confidence. Perhaps I didn't hear you groan. Have you got a cigarette? Or is it a local custom to ignore questions? The awkward silence there for a few seconds, and the big man started checking his pockets and droned on. God damn it, wrong click. Cigarette, cigarette. Wait a bit. Hey, I found one. Take it. Guess put his hand out of his pocket, and I was hit in the nose that his head fell back, and everything spun around. What? He took a few steps back, barely staying on his feet, but another blow followed in his stomach this time. He bent, he bent, lost spatial orientation. He realized his feet were not on the stairs and he was falling from the porch's railing. Only after a second, Alec figured out that the opponent attacked first and now he is on. He's in the bush on some old planks and sticks. He felt a stabbing pain in his shoulder, a piece of wood, or even worse, a rusty nail was in his flesh. 
He still was feeling dizzy. He could feel blood on his lips. The porch cracked. He heard clattering on the stairs and a loud whistle of an inhuman strength falls stunning Alec and making him forget about his own pain. Then the silence of the night was pierced by men's voices roaring with laughter as if it was some old Soviet cartoon about highwaymen. Clattering in the hallway, a sound of falling buckets, doors being slammed, and Sveta screaming. What the hell are you fucks doing? S screamed Alec out of despair. He stood up like a man possessed, picked up a plank, and he fell on and appeared on the porch in a few seconds. The front door was wide open. Darkness reigned beyond the doorstep. He found his flashlight quickly. It its case was broken. Turning it on produced no light. He could again hear noises clattering and his wife's scream coming from the house. He threw away the flashlight and the furious father jumped in the darkness and screamed even louder. Sveta, I'm coming! He ran in with a plane in his hands and saw a frightening view. Chairs were upside down. The floor was full of old rags, pieces of cloth, and plates. Sveta was in the corner near the switch, having her arms around the children. Her eyes were full of tears. Her lips were shaking in fear, mumbling something unrecognizable. Where are they? Alec threw away the plank, picking up a cooking knife, and decided to examine every room. Everything was sink everywhere. The furniture was on its place. Ragged pieces of cloth were lying around, and even someone's old boot was present. The curtains of one of the windows was, were torn off. He returned to his friend and family and asked his wife, Have you seen them? How many? No, it, it, it was very loud. S someone grabbed my hair. Frightened wife was pushing her children against her, stuttering because of crying. She could barely talk, swallowing the air as if she was out of breath. They are here somewhere. Quick, follow me outside. Alec made his command, leading his family through the hallway, swinging the knife through the darkness in front of him. But he could only hear silence in response. When he got outside, there was light in some houses nearby. A few women were there. A man with a stick in his hands was running towards them from one of the houses. When he got closer, Alec could see him properly. It was a short old man with a shaggy beard. He was holding a rifle. Look anxiously at the front and family produced a funny lips. What up? Oh, hi. Don't worry, we'll shoot them all. Alec talked to him about the issue and they decided to examine the house carefully once again. Roma watched him go and when he looked away, he saw his new friend nearby. The boy approached Roma and asked, wiping his nose with his sleeve, Have you seen them? Alec was the, was the worst to enter the house with the old man with the ri rifle following him. Old rags were all around the house. An old boot with a hole was lying near the stove. A rag in the hallway reminded of a torn shirt. An old sweatshirt with patches black from dirt was sitting on the chair at the table. He was sitting, not throwing around like other rags. The table was covered in dirt stains. Then Alec looked at the floor. It had dirt prints made by hooves. Alec could not believe what he saw. He shook his head and said with confidence, That's impossible. But what if they were following us? S See, mister, I have enemies in the city. I'm pretty sure it's their doing. They try to kidnap my wife. And that's such, said the old man. They have no place to hide for... We'll get them in a corner. An old man with a rifle went forward with Alec and followed him with a knife in his hand. Broken plank with which Alec was planning to defend himself was on the floor. Those were dirty footprints, torn curtains, rags, and so on. I'm pretty sure this was a demon. I'm also very positive it was a demon. I also think Alec's a dumbass. Yeah. They looked at every corner. They checked the closet, the stove bed, checked the cellar, but found no one. Alec could feel that the further search would be in vain, but didn't want to believe that. The old man said nothing supported Alec's desire to keep searching every corner. 
They entered a hallway to search into the entryway and attic, but then they heard a low voice from behind the door to his cell. It was disturbing gaggling. The one who la laughed probably didn't mind to be noticed. <coughs> Bastards, said Alec through his teeth. What's your name, mister? The old man got pale, he said quietly while keeping... Oh, while well, looking at the door. Uh, Victor Polovich. Victor. They might have guns. I'll open the door, you shoot. Just be quick about it, please. The old man loudly swallowed his saliva. He nodded. He made a sign of the cross, put his gun up, and kept looking at the door through the sight. Alec approached the door carefully. He could hear chuckling behind the door, turning it into gaggling. Someone carefully, someone's careful steps and silence. Forbore squeaking in silence again. Alec touched the handle and looked at the old man. Victor nodded a few times nervously. Now pushed the door with all of his might. The door didn't open. Alec got stuck for a moment, but then again pushed the door heavily with his shoulder. The old rotten door plank shook, creating a gap a few centimeters wide, but then the planks joined again eliminating the gap. Alec put his hands at the door jam and started kicking the door with all of his strength. After a few kicks, it opened wide, hitting the wall as if nothing was ever in, in its way. Alec realized that he was in, in the way of the old man's aim, but stood frozen because the room had no one but the oldly, ugly old woman lying on her bed. He who was rarely scared by anything felt chilled down his spine, just like in his childhood. Not possible, he thought. There was something vicious in the air. His eyes started moving in an unpleasant manner. Her dry, narrow lips slowly formed a smile. Alex slowly entered her room and looked through the door, knowing no one would be there. Fitia. The old one screeched as loudly as Alec shivered. Don't just stand there. Be my guest. I have a feeling the old man's gonna just eat himself out of there. Yeah. Her voice was full of strength filling the entire room, but her face barely moved, looking like a mask with narrow eyes and a narrow gap inside of her mouth. The old man hesitantly walked in put his, down his gun in his jaw as well. Is it me you're gonna shoot? The old woman screeched. The old man said nothing. The second passed and he walked up to, from his stunned. He swallowed loudly and made a sign of the cross three times. The fear left Alec leaving only confusion behind. Ma'am. Whom are you hiding that here? Said Alec politely. I'm hiding no one. Everyone is in the house drinking tea. <laughs> Said the old woman cunningly and slowly rolled her eyes. God damn it, wrong. Her face turned porcelain white. Her breath could not be heard. She changed in a second, looking like a corpse. The man approached her body. A sweet smell, which could only make one vomit reach their noses. Alex slowly reached out his hand and closed her eyes. Fear completely left him be. His breath got stable. The pain in the arms returned, signaling the end of the, of the stress. When Alec turned his back to the bed and breathed out, the same ugly screeching came out from behind. In the house, drinking tea. Oh, gee, she looks that dead, but she's still alive? The thing he felt oh. at that moment was not fear, but anxiety. That squeezed his soul like an anaconda squeezes its resisting prey. His breath was taken away. His tired legs are leading him into the house. I'll narrow up. He saw the same picture. After crossing the doorstep, dirty footprints, rags here and there, 
the holy boot near a stove, and black and sweatshirt sh sitting on a chair. He sat on a chair, feeling a strange pressure in the head. He was followed by the old man with the gun. Victor Polovich turned back. He seemed to feel this unpleasant pressure. He looked at Alec, shook his head unfairly, went into the kitchen, wet a towel, and offered it to Alec. Wipe, wipe your face. You got blood on it. Here it. Old man couldn't finish. His eyes were popping out, looking at something. His legs buckled. He stepped back, trying to get a hold of his gun, but panicked. Rained on his old body. He only managed to produce a moan of fear, pressing his back against the stove, pointing his finger at something. Alec turned back slowly. The sweatshirt left by an unknown guest on the chair behind him, with his sleeves crossed like people cross their arms on a chest. Alec did not notice how he, he jumped and knocked over the chair he was sitting on. He was paying all his attention to the sweatshirt with his arms crossed. He felt blood pulsating through his temples. Backpedaling toward the doorstep, Alex stumbled upon the old man. God only knew how, but they both moved out backwards, pushing each other. The last thing Alex saw in the room was a sweatshirt raising its arm in the air, violently hitting the table with an invisible fist. From then, he only memorized the sound of crashing of a crushing sugar bowl. And how they bumped into each other at the porch and fell on the ground. He could swear he clearly heard clattering at the hallway when he was falling down. When Alec reached the road, he fell on, fell on a knee, clinging to his heart. The old man ran past the crowd, screaming like a madman. It, it's them! They're walking in the house! Some old ladies who were enduring the cold night started making signs of a cross and headed home. Those who remained approached Alec. Sveta finally came to her senses and ran to, to the husband together with the children. Roma was struck to the core about what had happened but could not help but notice how his father was enjoying their care and attention. For a second he found himself liking the fact that there was something terrible in this house. Whatever it was, it could make fear and flee even in his father. Father was used to people fear him. While looking at his father's face, Roma was enjoying his misery and his dependence on on the crowd's attention. Roma's gonna grow up to not be the greatest of an adult. Yeah, Roma seems like he's gonna be a fucking shit. Yeah. The way he sees it, it's definitely different than what's going on. His dad's li honestly scared. Yeah. I get hating his dad, but that is honest fear. And I don't blame him! And Maria was trying to convince the family to stay at her place. In return to their duty of seeing off their old woman to the afterlife in the morning. Alec, for appearance's sake, said he did not want that, but would surely die this night should he try to enter that house. Fifteen minutes passed, and all of them were drinking tea at Mariah's place. Oh. Oh. What? 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 She was... The great-grandma was talking about ha they were all having tea at her house and what are they doing at the grandma's oh. house yep <laughs> yep predicting the future says book 15 minutes passed and all of them were drinking tea at Mariah's place the adults were discussing something quietly. 
Anya was looking around with her scared and mesmerized eyes as she was trying to find the thing that attacked him this night. Roma was feeling and thinking nothing. All the horrors around him dissolved in the mist of his mind. Later, everyone went to bed and Marias turned off the light. Roma and Anya had to sleep on the same stove bed. At first, he was comfortable lying on an old hardened mattress. But very soon, the force of sleepy silence dragged him to the bottom of his mind. While sleeping, Roma felt someone was trying to wake him up. He woke up several times, but every time it turned out to be out, it was part of his dreams. Morpheus tugged tight? Where did Morpheus come from? Uh. <laughs> We're in the Matrix. <laughs> no, no, no. Morpheus just is. His dream, he was fall, following a uh, shape. I think they mean that he's being hugged tightly by the god of dreams. Ah. Morpheus. Yeah, probably. In his dream, he was following a shade in, in the old woman's house. Uh, they were not evil, nor was it... It was not evil... Nor was it good. Was it even a shade? It could be the shape of, in the darkness of someone. Perhaps the real Morpheus were the friends we made along the way. Says Chu. This someone wanted to show Roma something. Then Romas was standing on a river bank. There was a small one, just two meters wide, but its waters were dark and muddy. The water was moving very fast, yet without making splashes. Tree branches were right above him, full of leaves. He could see his great grandmother standing on the opposite bank. But she was not as ugly as now. Well, damn! She was standing straight, slouching just a little bit. Her face was fearsome, yet warm and loving at the same time. At the same. I'm getting very annoyed. What happened? Discord kept cutting me off. Oh. Her face was fearsome, yet warm and loving at the same time. She was looking at him without moving or saying a word. Her eyes were sad and tired, but her image provoked respect rather than pity. She said something to Roma. That was something important she should never forget. Roma didn't repeat her words in his head he did not even hear them they appeared in his head but were not of his own as if the old woman on the opposite bank made these words and thoughts appear in his head but should one ask him what those words were he would fail to express any of them She said something to Roma. She was dead. Weird men standing around her. Some of them were very large and some very small. One could even mistake the smallest ones for children, if not for their ugly red noses and brute faces. It took her limbs moving them as if she was making moves. Some of them even put their hands in her mouth, moving her jaw, saying it was their hoarse voice. Is it about time me and my grandchildren have some tea and talk about things? 
Most of these weird priests bursted out laughing. At the same time, they moved her limbs and make her get up. Her dead body with the eyes closed moved with heavy steps towards the inner part of the house. The doors opened. The old man, with the help of the smaller men who were operating her legs, crossed the doorstead. Wilma's parents were at the table. Their faces were covered in sweat. Sveta, after coming to her senses, asked quietly, Is it you, Grandma? I believe we've buried you. All the men in different sizes laughed and chanted in different voices, stamping their feet at the same time. Not dead. Not dead. Not dead. Not dead. The smallest and most agile one got on a table and started slapping all on his cheeks, screaming with laughter. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! He ain't dead yet! Come on! Her eyes opened slowly. She looked at the spouses with her tired but clear, lively eyes. Wilma's parents kept staring at the great grandmother and appeared they could not see him nor these weird guests. Awake, awake! You can't die until the wheel is rolling. The room was filled with their happy voices. Eyes of the old woman glanced at the direction of some of the parasites. We were running around her as they scattered as, as if they were stung. Another man took the place of the one who was clapping the old woman with. This one had a big potato shaped nose sticking up below his hat, which was covered in the upper part of his face. The man was a little bit bigger than an average cat. He slowly and timidly put his hands with the sleeves down on the woman's face, moved her jaw, and spoke with his high, husky voice. You came here not to bury me, but to get at my house out of greed. Her eyes were, god damn it, were looking at Roma's father as if the small guy in the hat had exactly said exactly what the old woman wanted. Alec twitched and last lashed out in, in his manner. Hell with this with old old dirty shack. Sveta covered her eyes with, with hands and cried, saying through her tears. We are being targeted, Grandma. Let at least the children hide here. The woman's gaze changed direction. The huge man with the head as large as a big pumpkin came around the corner. His lower jaw reminded more of a bulldozer blade than part of a human body. Master, being watched by the old woman, chuckled shyly and approached Alec from behind and started pressing his shoulders. Almost eyes were piercing through the hands of them, of, of the of the man in a sweatshirt. For a moment, Roma thought that that the grandma's eyes were not following the boomer bouncer's head hands, but it was the other way around. The grizzly hands were pressing Alec against the table more and more. Alec couldn't figure out what was happening. He touched his neck, then he tried to unbutton his shirt, and again he leaned on the table trying to resist the best he could. Then the hands of the giant creep pressed even harder, and Roma heard how the father's bones cracked. Hello. Blood turned the table red. Sveta kept sitting and crying, covering her face with her hands. The weird men got in the room in a blink and turned the old woman together with her chair to face Roma. The boy felt her harsh, ex expectant gaze on his skin. One of his eyes looked at the man with the potato nose calling for him. Moved, the old man's jaw screaming. <laughs> Screwing the witch's words with a disgusting voice. Oh, its sins have long shadows. Blood started flowing down from the table on a huge stream, like a waterfall covering the table and stool legs. It followed even more at the edge of the sea of blood, reached the boy's feet. All those creepy men jumped up, getting on the shelves, on the tables, on the ledges. 
even the giant guy in the sweatshirt swiftly got up, got in the counter, corner of a picture frame like a cat. They were laughing loudly as if it was a very funny game and edging each other on. Don't you get dirty, boys! The pool of blood almost touched around Roma's boot when he was jumping back to the corner trying to get on the doorstep. The blood kept flowing. It started flowing, flooding the house. When, he, when it flowed so much, it reached the old man's knees. Roma barely managed to open the door and, and get in the way. Hallway. Then darkness came. When the mother woke him up, he felt his head splitting in two. He could not open his eyes properly. Everything around him floating in mist. After a rushed breakfast, the family left the kind neighbor's house. Coming to the witch's house, Alec stopped to smoke. His eyes were on the clo on the closed shutters. Realizing he had entered the house, Alec finished his cigarette, threw away the roach, and moved towards the leaning porch. His family followed him. When the four squeaked, the family saw an extremely unpleasant picture. All the dormants were scrammed together. Dirty rags were here and there. There was a rubber boot, boot at the table. The tattered sweatshirt was near lying on the floor. I like to look at the sweatshirt dismissively. He kicked it like a dead animal, just to be sure. He looked around carefully and said, <sighs> Gotta take care of the mess. The girls will be cleaning up. The boys will take it out the trash. Where are we gonna take it out? Asked Roma in his cold and emotionless manner. Throw it outside near the porch. Answered his father, looking at the sweatshirt. Throw out all the boots, rags, torn clothes. Gotta burn all this shit. Roma was was about to take care of the sweatshirt, but the father stopped him. Don't touch this. It's heavy. I'll do it myself. Don't want you, want to get you dirty. Alec pick, picked the plank he was carrying last night. Trying not to touch the sweatshirt with his hand. He hooked it. <sighs> with the plank and carried it outside. A pile of rags and shabby footwear formed outside in 15 minutes. A bit later, they could hear the old woman's gloomy moans. Everyone was doing their best not to pay attention to them, but one could notice how the family was avoiding an eye contact with each other and talking quietly. The cleaning of the mess was accompanied by the old woman's gloomy moans. Everything, despite the bright sunlight piercing through the shutters, seemed dark, rotten, and dead. Wallpaper peeling off, wood blackened on its edges, paint sp splitting off and soot in the corners. When Alec dropped the mesh on a gas gasoline pile of rags, a black, and black column of smoke rose up in the air. The mother took the cauldron away from the pile, vomiting a toxic smoke. Some of their neighbors approached the family to ask with all their ritual oral curiosity what they were doing. After hearing Alex's short answers, they nodded in approval and offered their assistance. A little bit later, with a crowd of old ladies gathered at the last the embers of, of the flame, a tall woman with a rough stubble appeared among the crowd. His hands were hanging down his body like ropes. He was skinny and looked awkwardly reminding one of a grasshopper. Richard greeted Alec and they started discussing something quietly so the children couldn't hear them. Ron wanted to know the topic of their discussion, but more 
than that. He wanted to have a nice, want to have a rest spending the night without one. He sat on Old Prince Anya and did his best to enjoy the last warm sunlight of this year. His sister put her hand, her hand, her head on his knees gently like a cat. His mother came to them in a few minutes and said, We'll be back soon. Got it. Things to do. Stay here. Don't go too far. And don't walk in the house alone, okay? Okay. Said Roma indifferently. This small cloud went somewhere together with their parents. The sun was slowly warming the autumn air. Roma closed his eyes and gave in to to a sweet nap. Everything around was filled with guests with village sounds. A rooster screamed somewhere someone was chopping wood nearby. Sometimes he could hear neighbors front doors opening and closing. Something was indicating that this village was not as silent and gloomy as it looked to them yesterday when they arrived. Roy almost fell asleep when he heard a sound of Clanging metal. Roman was used to wake up to every sound because of parents' constant night squabble. He opened his eyes immediately. A guy with a bicycle was standing near the pile a few meters away. Oh, it's you. Hi. Roman greeted his new friend, Dolly. Hey, can I join gas? Sit down. I don't mind. Vitya left his... Vitya left his old Soviet bicycle on the, on the pile, at the pile. Wiped his nose with a sweater sleeve and stopped in front of them. His boots were clearly too big for him. An old discolored jacket with an outstretched sweater s s stated he was from a poor family. Vitya's face was covered in dirt but shining with joy. He was staring at sleepy Anya and her brother taking turns and grinning. Then he said hesitantly, Can you please tell what happened last night? Did you see anyone? Roma winced, but a typical child desire to brag and, and to just chit-chat took over. It was very strange. At first I thought it was a wild animal, a bear or something like that. Wow. Fia produced a surprise grimace. A bear? Did you actually see it? Realizing his new friend was was a grateful, kind listener, Roma cheered up and leaned closer to Fia. I didn't see one, and I don't think it was a bear. Definitely not a bear. Then who? It all started like this. I almost fell asleep, but I heard a noise outside. Then I heard a crack. Everything was wobbling. Someone was breaking into the house, then run, ran in, into the hallway. The door opened with force, as if they wanted to rip it off the hinges. That's something! screamed the grubby boy of joy. And then something big ran in on four legs. What was it? No idea. The first thought was, it's a bear. But it was too dark to see anything. And I and Anya heard its roar. Roar? No, not roar. Heavy breathing. You know, when you play with a dog and had so much fun, it's exhausted and breathes heavily, swallowing its own saliva. That's what I could hear. He was running around the house, flipping chairs, breathing, and... Sniffling. I called for mom, but was too afraid to scream because it would hear me screaming. And? She woke up too at that point. No surprise, she did. And then. But then. Then this happened. In mere seconds, we found each other in the darkness. I was holding hands with my sister and mom at the same time. We were running to the front door and someone grabbed mom. She screamed. And Anya screamed too. I wasn't screaming. 
Sent on your raising her head from brother's knees. Keep sleeping. I don't feel like it. <laughs> and I was just, and I was just screaming. And by the way, you were scared the most. No one was silent, demonstrating he did not agree yet. Was unwilling to argue with his sister. Thea smiled to the to the working girl and made an effort to break the awkward silence. It's only natural if you got scared. I would shit my pants in that situation. But the heart doesn't fail me earlier, of course. Yeah, I think... I think I'll just stop here. Fair enough. Also, it feels like it's less like the game and more, not even the visual novel type of game and just a story. I will continue this off tomorrow by starting to stream at 6 o'clock while waiting for a donut to do Apex. So yeah, let's see if there's any other one I want to raid. Yep, there is. Oh, shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, Twitch. Quit the bullshit. I had it muted, but it was plain sound. With fucking oh. Twitch. Alright. Alright, Jerry, you get to choose what we say in the raid. I'm just going to quote something Spoot said earlier. Oh, I spelled the I spelled that wrong. Let me just uh There we go. All right. I'll go with that. All right. Everyone ready? Alright, in three, two, one.